In this video, I'm going to use my Nikon Z 180-600 lens on my Nikon Z62 and do some backyard bird photography and just show you how sharp these images are coming out of this lens. Welcome back to my channel. For those that have not been here before, my name is Ron and I'm a photographer in East Tennessee. Today's video, we're going to do some testing with the Nikon Z 180-600 lens on the Nikon Z62. Now I would show you the Nikon Z62, but I'm using that to record this video right now. Anyways, uh, I'm going to set up in my backyard and do some uh, songbird photography with this lens. And then I'm going to take these photographs into Lightroom and show you edits of those photographs. So you can see for yourself just how sharp these photographs are coming out of this lens. We're going to start with an edit of this Blue Jay uh, on a snowy day. There's a lot of white snow in the background. There's some distracting elements back here in the photograph. But really what I wanted to show you was how to edit a photograph like this. This was shot at 1 1,000th of a second at f6 at ISO 560 using the Z180-600 to lens on the Nikon Z62. The lens was set at the 390 millimeter focal distance. What I like to do is start off with the auto settings in Lightroom under basic tab. So I just hit the auto. And then the first thing I'm going to do is crop this. So we're going to select the crop tool. And I believe I'm going to just kind of crunch it down pretty good here. I really like this down here, but that's kind of distracting over there. Yeah. See what a horizontal, a vertical looks like. Now let's go with the vertical crop on that. Okay, I'm moving him over just a hair like that all right yeah it's kind of a pleasing crop so after I crop it the first thing I want to do is apply topaz denoise to it I'm gonna go ahead and select that now I right click on the image go to edit in and go down to topaz denoise AI make sure that's set at resolution 300 and say edit with Lightroom settings really not bad how I just want to show you how well these clean up not so much how I... These are the four uh, Topaz models I've got loaded. This is the standard one. This is the clear one. I usually go between one of these two. And I think the, uh, the standard one looks a little bit better. So we're going to click on that on the right-hand side. Make sure that Model Preferences is selected right here. And we're going to say Apply. Kind of let Topaz do its own... And this is the uh, denoised image. I'm going to zoom in. And this is the image without denoise. And just look in this area right here. You'll see the amount of detail uh, that Topaz has able to take, bring back out of that photograph. Especially on its neck right here. Look right there. See right in this area? Uh, that's the before. And this is after denoise. So the next thing I like to do is go ahead and apply the sharpening to the bird. We're not going to sharpen the background. So I right click on the image, go to edit in and Topaz sharpen AI. And the same thing, you edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments and make sure the, uh, these settings are like this. I always make sure the resolution is for 300 and it's going to load up sharpen AI. And I can use this slider to see what it's doing, okay? Now, I just want to sharpen the bird. I don't want to sharpen the snow, and I really don't care about the perch. So I'm gonna scroll back just a little bit so I can see the whole bird, and I'm gonna go down to this little icon here that says selectively sharpen your image. Back down here near the apply button. Click on that, and then go up to this box here where it says add, click on that, and then take a, uh, your mouse, if you have a, a pen, you can use a tablet. Hold down the mouse button and just paint on the bird. The red will show up showing what is actually masked. Uh, I'm not too fussy about this. I don't try to get perfect, but I just want basically the bird to get this sharpening technique. When you're done with that, go down to the apply button and then hit apply again. And it's going to apply the sharpening to the bird. And we'll zoom in. 
And this is the sh with the sharpening. This is with just denoise, and this is the original image. This is the final one so far. This is the original so far. Now I may have a tad too much sharpening, but that's okay. I was just demonstrating how well these clean up. Okay. Now, for the rest of this edit, I'm going to do some selective edits here uh, and do a few more things on this. You could stop the recording here if all you are interested is what kind of detail this lens can produce. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this edit out. First thing I want to do is I want to provide a little separation between the bird and the background. So I'm going to go up to the masking tool of Lightroom. I'm going to select background. And it's selected everything but the bird and this part of the perch. So what I like to do here is I like to just reduce the exposure a little bit. And bring down the contrast and the highlights. And we're just providing a little bit of separation here. Bring down the shadows while we're at it. Okay, might want to increase that exposure a little bit, make that snow whiter. And then we're going to select the bird. So you can create another mask. You can go this way and do it and say select subject. And it's going to select the bird and the perch. And I want to add, increase the exposure. And we're going to pull the contrast back a little because I like to add manual contrast. Bring back the highlights, increase the shadow. Now I'm going to increase the whites a little and then decrease the blacks and apply my own um, contrast to it by increasing the whites and decreasing the blacks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into Photoshop because I want to run some Nick collection tools on this. So I'm going to right click on the image, go down to edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop. And we're going to edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. <laughs> and now we're in Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the Filter menu option, go down to Nick Collection 6, and select the Color Effects. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some brilliance and warmth to this image. It's one of the tools I like to use. And as you can see, it's really, really done a good job with popping some of the colors off of that. And I'm going to say apply. And we'll show you right here. Uh, this is without the brilliance and warmth. This is with the brilliance and warmth. Without, with, to even increase the saturation some on that bird. And then I also want to create, uh, I want to go ahead and apply um, some more color effects tools. And the one I want to do now is the Glamour Glow. And I'm going to select Strong, which is O2. Now, I really don't want the bird to be softened up this much. So I'm going to brush some of it out uh, of this. But right now, the whole pimp picture has this Glamour Glow. And one of the things I like to do under Glamour Glow, Glamour Glow is to protect my highlights, this slider right here. So I'm going to increase that to 100%. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a mask to this image and then brush out a little bit of that Glamour Glow from that bird. So I go here to the Layer Mask tool in the bottom and click on that button. It's going to create a white layer. I have a black brush selected. I'm going to change the opacity to about 40%. Make it about 40. I'll type that in by hand. Okay. That means whatever I brush out, okay, is going to be uh, subtle. It's going to be 40%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're going to do with this bird. I'm going to hit the B key for brush. And now I'm going to start brushing out the glamour glow in the bird not this other parts of the image just the bird um, if you'll notice i have a white mask black will conceal anything so that's kind of like black is erasing anything so i'm going to start brushing and you can see it's changing subtly and i really like the uh amount of saturation it has given to the wing bars here they're really pretty on this bird so um, what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to increase um, I'm going to increase the opacity on my brush to 100 percent and I'm going to brush out just a little bit more in the top portion of this bird right here. Okay, I kind of like that. Uh, once you like the changes you've done and you're happy with those, I'm going to hit the Z key and fit the screen. Uh, it's a pleasing image to me. So what I'm going to do now is flatten the layers. I'm going to layer, flatten image. And then I hit the file and save. And it's going to take it right back to Lightroom for us. Wait for that little bar down there to finish before you exit Photoshop. We're going to exit Photoshop. And now we're back to Lightroom with the final edit. So what we're going to do is a few comparisons here. We're going to start off with the original. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit right here so you can see what we've done to the bird. Um, and then we're going to look at the denoise version of it. Then we're going to look at the denoise and the sharpened version of it. And then we're going to look at the final version of it. So, you know, you be the judge here. I think the, uh, the one on the right is the original, and I think the one on the left looks a lot better after you've done just a few basic edits to it. We're just kind of scrolling around looking at things. You can see the noise has been removed from this area real nicely. Uh, the vibrance of the bird and the details in the bird. So there you go. That's uh, how I would edit a photograph from a bird in my backyard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a small slideshow of some photographs uh, that I edited from my backyard bird photography. This is a great lens uh, that Nikon has produced for the Z cameras, or the mirrorless cameras. Uh, it has replaced my 200 to 500 VR f5.6 lens. And if you want to see a video on uh, some landscape photography I did with this lens, there'll be a link in the description for a video that I did doing some landscape photography with this lens, mainly barn photography. And also there'll be another link for another video explaining why I switched from the 200 to 500 VR to this lens here. If you got some usefulness from this video, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and hit the like button right now and give me a thumbs up on that, please. My name is Ron Durant. I live in East Tennessee. I'm a photographer. Y'all have a nice day now. Bye-bye.